We often consider getting fitted for expensive new golf clubs, but for me, this is the one aspect of club fitting which is massively overlooked. Let's do it. And let's do it now. Hi everyone, it's James Robinson here. Guys, first things first. First things first, welcome back to a very rainy and cold, um, what can only be described as English winter time. Chris, how are we? Cold. Cold, it's not great mate, is it? No, but it's not raining as of yet, so... It's not too worry. bad. And also, this also gives us a chance to talk through one of the biggest aspects of fitting, which for me is massively, massively overlooked. Guys, you join us on another episode of Short Game Saturdays, and we're gonna talk that and that and how they work together for the perfect putter fitting, Chris. Correct. Are you, uh, are you, not, are you busy? Just getting the technology wizard fire. Speaking of technology, how cool is that thing there? Oh, the old ball collector. Well, it might be the grass cutter. No, it's not the grass cutter. That's retired, it looks like. <laughs> So Chris, we're going to jump straight into it this week, and guys, obviously if you are new here, please make sure you do consider hitting that subscribe button below, and basically we're talking not only put a length, but also lie angle, because length obviously determines what the lie angle is going to be, Chris, doesn't it? So guys, when you go and get fitted for your new golf clubs, people often go and get fitted to make sure they've got the perfect driver shaft, to make sure they've got the perfect lie angle in their irons, but actually when it comes down to scoring, Chris, what is the club that you score with the most? The putter. So we're going to be using the putter probably, well, anywhere between twenty and forty. I was going to say four, I was going to say forty and fifty, but uh... yeah. So it's again, it's probably nearly fifty percent of the game. So you're going to be obviously putting using that club on every single hole. So it's something that we need to have fitted and exact for you. And these things aren't cheap either. They can get quite expensive, especially if you're going to the Scotty Cameron range like we have done ourselves. Right. So it's important to make sure it's right. It's important to make sure you've, you've got fitted for the right club. That's it. So when everybody goes for a driver fitting, spends the money on a fitting for a driver because they know they're going to spend 400, 500 pounds. Same now with the putter, they're around about 350. So we're looking at, we might as well get it fitted correctly for you as opposed to using it for three months and saying it's broken. And Chris, what's some of the things that you see when people do get fitted, or should I say just don't get fitted, and end up with the incorrect lie angle, the incorrect length? Again, a lot of times when they get fitted or don't get fitted, they pick something off the rack, it's probably normally too short for them, uh, and they've just changed and adapted to that, so the toe might be in the air, the heel might be in the hair, depending on the... in the hair, in the air, depending... The toe's in the hair, you've done well, haven't you? <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's something that's not exactly for them, then strike becomes a problem, they can't pull very consistently, and then they go and spend another 200, 300 pounds on a putter. Whereas, if you just get fitted at the start, you're going to be more consistent. So as you can see here guys, we are using the Body Track Pressure Mapping System. This is something actually that we do have a lot of content coming for you guys with, so if you're looking forward to that, make sure you let us know. And Chris, you'll see now on the left hand side of the screen that it's mapping exactly where my pressure is. This is a 35 inch putter. Do you want me to go? Yeah, whenever you're ready. Ooh, not a bad put. How many do you want me to hit, Chris? So I hit three. And this is going to show us not only how many we make or miss, but generally where my pressure is going to be in the stroke. Love that sound. And again. So two out of three there, and Chris's favourite song, I believe, is two out of three, ain't bad. So we've done all right there, mate. Meatloaf, classic, the only person I've ever seen in concert. Actually, that's a lie, so it's all Coldplay. But, um, not that that's anything to shout about today. Uh, yeah, so what we've done there is we've looked at James's pressure. Again, in a normal tightless fitting, I know they do it all on eye, so they will just see if it suits you as you stand over the ball. Today, we just want to show you what the difference makes. So. Obviously, we know this fit. Uh, we know this putter was fitted for James, and we can see that I'll helped him with his setup. So we can see throughout his stroke here. And I'll throw those on screen now, Chris, to your left hand side. Ooh, perfect. So we can see that he's balanced. You like the weather, man? Just point that way, and then you can. There you go. There you're looking. As we can see, <laughs> right here. 
We've Whoop. got a cold easterly wind and rain. Now, we can see that his pressure from front to back is very consistent, so he's weight in his feet. If we see somebody with a putter that's potentially too short, we start to see that the pressure goes into the top. And we're going to look at that in just a minute, I believe, aren't we? We're going to look at that with a shorter putter. And again, if somebody goes into a longer putter, what I see is a lot of people will start to stand up, weight goes into the heels. And again, this does all different things to your stroke. So simply, one of the biggest things is getting the correct length and lie angle can make a huge effect on your setup. And if we can get the setup solid, we can normally be more consistent. And we saw from the video there as it went through that the ball rolled perfectly end over end. So James made a good square contact to impact and he's gone in. And one of the huge things for me when we talk about this is I'm not a tall person, as we all know. Five foot nine, five foot ten on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> but but you wouldn't assume that I would have a 35 inch putter would you it depends entirely on what you're trying to do with a your posture what you're trying to do with your stroke and then you need to work out obviously your arm length and things like that because sure, sure. it's all things which all we're trying to do is get as consistent as possible with this with the putter yep. and then obviously the line angle has to be right as well to make sure we get a, a consistent that's, start line that's it and uh, let me find a putter um Again, when we start to set up into posture, then the Scotty Cameron guys, a big thing is getting you where you're sat and your eye line is just inside the ball. Because so, one, of the, one of the big things people used to say is eye line had to be over the ball, didn't it? Had to be over that, and what we've seen over the years is obviously more data, better technology. That sometimes encourages your path out on the way back. You cut across the ball, and as we know, it's very hard to hold a point if we're cutting across the ball. So. Getting the posture, getting your posture right with a putter that's the right length, so you can get your eyeballs, eyeballs, you can get your eye line inside, you're going to be more consistent. So now should we look at a shorter putter? Yeah, let's have a look at a shorter putter. Right guys, so as you'll see now, we've moved into pretty much exactly the same putter, but in 34 inches instead of 35. So now my posture is a little bit more hunched over, I'm trying to accommodate the putter a little bit more. And from here now, I'm still going to try and hold this putt, so it might not necessarily affect the putts as much as you may think but really for me it is more of a consistency issue and to make sure you've got good balance and to make sure you're not gonna start to oh that one wasn't a true roll was it no not your best roll on that one we're trying to give ourselves the best possible chance of putting consistently two out of three again ain't bad so already there you might start to see how the posture looks a little bit more hunched over and from a naked eye of a fitter you may actually look at it and say actually you do need a longer putter for how you're going to stand to it. Depends entirely on what you're working on in your stroke, what you actually perceive as a good consistent putting stroke. Yeah. Chris, what's the weather saying? So weather forecast as we see here, the start of the setup, so just before the game takes the putter away, he's very much in his toes. So we got to 70 late 60% in the front of his toes. And, and I've tried to do this, I've tried to stand the same there, so. The setup with that little inch different has made him, like you said, more hunched over, weight falls forward. And then through the stroke, as you'll see on the screen, is he starts to then fall back throughout the motion to balance himself, the weight goes back into his heels. And as we know, throughout a stroke, that's not gonna be consistent. If he's got a pressure put, probably against me in a match at some point. For the win. For the half for the win um, it's going to be very difficult for him to be consistent over those ones as the putter then is working on a different plane it's not on the arc and then it's going to be a glancing blow and as soon as we get a glancing blow it's not going to start on line pace control is going to be hard and other than that it's not got a great chance of going in so basically what we're trying to get out of there is if you do go and get fitted for golf clubs and you take your golf quite seriously yep. don't just go and get fitted for the right driver shaft don't just go and make sure your driver spin is optimized don't go and make sure well do go and make sure all these things but also make sure you get fitted for the right putter and when we say right putter we don't just mean is it a mallet is it a blade is it a satellite dish or whatever there's all sorts of different ones out there now isn't they make sure it's the right length make sure it's the right loft make sure it's the right lie angle and from there we guarantee sort of maybe can't really guarantee anything nowadays can you that you're going to put better you be more consistent yeah you should start to hit the middle of the face a little bit more as a result we then know hopefully you should hold more pulse 
or three put less, which I suppose is the same thing. Both of the above. Um, guys, if you have enjoyed that, make sure you not only hit that subscribe button below, make sure you check out Chris's channel, Chris Dennis Golf, for all your short game necessities. Uh, and we've got a lot coming with uh, the guys at Body Track, which I'm really looking forward to. It's a product which we've used quite a lot, haven't we? We've used in our coaching lives and yep. tail park games as well. We can use it for not only better putting, but better driving, better wedge play, better pretty much everything. So. All around everything. So it's one of those things, a lot of people, it gives you real information as opposed to feel. Like for James there, he said he felt like he was in the same posture, but the real facts and stats said that it was- Should probably say this isn't a sponsored video either, so anyone thinking that we're just trying to- No, we just have it for coaching. Yeah, so, um, so there we have it guys. Thank you ever so much for watching. That was another episode of Short Game Saturdays. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you next week. Bye.